This is what Newton's root finding function looks like in software. And in this video, I'll be going deep into one of Kepler's equations as a concrete example of how to actually use this method, which is in the bottom right corner there. So I've gone over Kepler's equation previously in my TLE video, but I really vaguely explained how Newton's method worked to actually solve that equation. So I want to, in this video, greatly improve my explanation of that. So the second video in this video series, and as I've explained, I'm gonna be going into Newton's root solver software and then going over that eccentric anomaly example. So as a quick recap of my previous video where I explained the algorithm of Newton's method, it's just that you wanna use the derivative of whatever function you wanna find the zero of in order to be able to estimate what that root is. And you can kind of follow your function using a derivative. So in this top left example of a simple polynomial, say if you start with a guess out here, you use a derivative to find a path for you until it intersects with y equals zero. And then wherever, wherever that x equals at that y equals zero, you use that as your next iteration and then follow the derivative like that. So you can see how that would kind of converge in this equation. And the bottom right is what I'm going deeper into in this video, which is Kepler's equation, um, which I'll just get straight into which is an equation that relates mean anomaly to eccentric anomaly. And again, if you want more explanation of what this is, uh, you can just check out my TLE video, which I'll put a link in the description for. So what makes this function so unique is that there is no closed form solution for eccentric anomaly. So given an eccentric anomaly for this equation, you can find mean anomaly, but you can't find eccentric anomaly given a mean anomaly. And if you don't believe me, you can just try to solve this equation algebraically for E, and you'll find that it's actually not possible. But it can still be solved just numerically. So in order to do that, we need to formulate a function with respect to E that we want to equal to zero. So all we need to do for that is subtract M from both sides, which would make this F of E equal to zero. So we just have some function of E that we want to equal to zero, which is this. And what we want to do is we want to find what E value is going to make this function equal to zero. And we're going to find that numerically. So then in order to be able to use Newton's method to solve that, you need to know the derivative of your function here with respect to E, which in this case is actually very simple, just one minus E cosine E, where I should mention this little E is um, eccentricity, and then the big E is eccentric anomaly. And again, there's more information about that in my TLE video. So that's what I wanted to explain for that. And now to get into the software side of things, I'll first start off with just the function, and then I'll go over how to actually use it. So. This function is actually really simple to implement and it's very powerful. So this is what it is, Newton's single, uh, where you have your inputs as your function. So whatever your function is, and it's actually a type of Python function. And then you have your F prime, which is your derivative function, uh, which is the derivative of your just input function. And then you have what your initial guess is. So for these, for this method to work, you need to have an initial guess in order to iterate on. Then you need your tolerance in order to be able to say, okay, I've converged to enough that I want, which is I just uh, arbitrarily set as one e to the negative 12, but you can set it whatever you want, depending on your problem. And then arguments, so basically any type of arguments that you wanna pass into your function and your f prime function, which I'll get into when I actually implement it in the main function or in the main file. So the first thing, you can have this if you want or not, if you're just curious how many steps it took for your solver to actually solve it, you can have just a step counter. So the first thing you want to do is you calculate your initial delta x. So that's basically your first iteration where you pass into your function uh, your current guess. So I'm going to reuse this variable x0. I'm going to reassign it. So you can think of this as your current guess, not just your initial guess that you pass in. And then whatever arguments you want to pass into that function and divide that by the same, just a derivative where you pass in your current guess and then whatever arguments you want to pass in. And then the main loop that you want to do is what this says is this while the absolute value of your change in x guess is greater than your tolerance, keep iterating. So then once the absolute value of your or once a change in your guess is less than tolerance, you can just say, OK, I've converged and I have the answer. So while that's not true, then you want to calculate your next guess, which x0, you subtract the delta x on the x0. Uh, where that minus equals is equivalent of saying this. It's just a shorthand way of doing that. So I just like to have the minus equals there. And you want to calculate what your new delta x is for your next iteration, which is, again, just copy and pasted. This is exactly the same thing as this. And then just increment your step. Again, this step is optional if you want to know what it is. But then if not, then you don't have to have it. So then once the change in your guess is less than the tolerance, then you can just return the value and just say you converged. So as an example, I had in the previous video just an example of a simple polynomial, which I'll have here, but then I just wanna go actually deeper into that eccentric anomaly equation because I think that's more interesting, just having a concrete example. So 
uh, what you want to do is you want to define your function. So first I'll go over the polynomial where it's just simple x to the fourth minus 8x squared plus 3. And then we can find a derivative of that super easily since the polynomial, which is 4x cubed minus 16x. And then all you need to do to do that is just, so it's actually extremely simple, but very powerful, as I said. So just uh, Newton's tools or numerical tools uh, here that I have. So that's just imported as import numerical tools as MT, where I add to my path variable where that function is located. So basically where that file is located, I just add it here where I have the numerical methods with Python and then Python tools. I add that and then import it. So all you have to do is where X is your solution and then steps to the polynomial is that what I just named the variable, how many steps it took to solve is equal to the Newton single. And then you want to pass in just your function. Again, this is a function. So you're passing in a function as an argument and then the derivative of your function and then three. I put three, four. Oh, right, right. <laughs> yeah, that's initial guess. So three is the initial guess. Uh, I just had some initial guess. And again, this is going to be different because this polynomial function has uh, a few, four different zeros because it's x to the fourth. So depending on what your initial guess is, you're going to find different solutions to that. So you just have to be aware of that if you have a function that has more than one root. And again, that's super simple. And then I'll show what the, um, what I output to the terminal. That's the way you can see. So basically this is the polynomial root was found in six steps and it was just found to be 2.75. Uh, that's pretty simple. So I just wanted to get that away first because I think the other case is a lot more interesting where you have this function of your eccentric anomaly, which is what I showed in the previous slides, where you have your input into it is whatever your eccentric anomaly guess is at that current step and then whatever arguments you want to pass in. So again, this is just the equation that I had in the previous slide where you have E minus, this is eccentricity, arg zero. So I can put that here where args E and then M E mean anomaly. So E and M, that's what those are. So that's, the, so that's why this is E minus eccentricity times the sign of eccentric anomaly minus the mean anomaly here. And then again, just the derivative is super simple. Again, it was the same inputs and it was one minus eccentricity times math out cosine. Uh, oh, well, this is actually numpy. It depends on what you want to do. Oh, this is actually math because the this uh, numpy, so I have from numpy import sine pi and a range, but this numpy dot sine can take in arrays where if you use, um, from math import cosine, uh, this this math function will only take in a scalar. So that's why I have this here. I only have this for the arrays because I want to plot it down here. Uh, but you actually want to use the math one because the math one is actually faster for scalars. So just keep that in mind uh, for speed purposes. Uh, yeah, so that's those two functions. And then these are the initial conditions or the arguments that I want to pass in. So I have an example that I used in a previous video where in this, um, in this directory, I have this text file called iss.txt. So that this is just a two line element set um, of what the ISS is, International Space Station. So from that, you can calculate uh, its orbit. So that's what I have here. So I just wanna compare my previous version to the version that I have now, which is a lot cleaner. So for that case, the mean anomaly was 273 degrees and the eccentricity is very small because the ISS is in a nearly circular orbit. And then the initial guess of the eccentric anomaly is just gonna be this. And then these are gonna be the arguments that I pass into it, which is the eccentricity and the mean anomaly. So then that's just super simple again to pass in right here. You just pass in the function of the eccentric anomaly, the derivative, your initial guess, and then the arguments. So this is where the arguments comes in, where these are the arguments, the eccentricity and the mean anomaly. Super simple. And then I just have another test case where I made the eccentric or the eccentricity very large. So you can see how much, how this is a very nonlinear function and yeah, just kind of the complexity of the function. So, and then I just pass this in with uh, another initial guess is E0 underscore and just different arguments here, which says arguments underscore equals just these two values. Again, super simple. Just printed it all out to the terminal and then plotted everything, which is what the plot you see in the slides. So when you plug all that in, oh, and it's one thing I should explain. I also call this TLE to coast function, which is what I used previously, which I'll show you why I wanted to redo this because this is actually really ugly. So if I go to ECC, ECC anomaly, this is what I showed in the previous TLE video, which is extremely ugly. So it's this 
right here and I did and I, as I said I really vaguely explained it and really it was just a pretty terrible explanation um, and again it's written pretty sloppily I think so that's why I'm going to compare to make sure that I have the same answer as before but again doing it in a lot cleaner way and that's the output that we get from here so this is um, TLE to codes function just outputting what the codes are for that ISS uh, TLE uh, which is expected so then what we get here is that the eccentric anomaly in that case was was estimated to be 273.621 and again, this is what I got for, for this method, which is just a lot cleaner and a lot easier to read, 273.621. And the trailing numbers are a bit different just because I had a higher tolerance uh, doing it this time around. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Again, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. And if you liked the video, give me that thumbs up to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. So for the next video in this series, I have two options here. You guys can just let me know which one you'd rather see first. So basically there's another method for root solving uh, that's called the bracket method, where you basically just have an upper bound and a lower bound, that's your bracket. And you're guessing that your solution is somewhere in there. And then you can just keep uh, converging on your bounds until you converge basically on a single or are close enough to a single point. So you're basically just changing your up and lower bounds to converge on what the solution actually is. And then I'll, I can also go over Newton's root solving method for multivariable functions because this also works, where instead of taking a scalar derivative like I did in this video, you actually find the Jacobian matrix and then use that in order to solve. So this is very useful for multivariable cases and it's actually really interesting. So yep, that's it for this video. Let me know what you want to see or any questions in the comments and thank you for watching.